If you wound the clock back a little more than half a billion years ago, we'll find that the Earth changed dramatically within a relatively short period of time with the appearance of enormous numbers of new species. Today we'll be looking at this astonishing event known as the Cambrian Explosion, which was so significant that it's sometimes referred to as the biological Big Bang. Stay with us as we explore the answers to how the explosion occurred, how it dramatically ended, and how much of it remains today. From an explosion of early life to the greatest extinction in history, the Paleozoic era was a time of change. Researchers believe that the Earth was formed about 4.6 billion years ago, but until around 600 million years ago, evolution progressed at a slow pace, and the only living organisms were bacteria, plankton, and unicellular algae. During the Cambrian explosion, however, the trend suddenly changed. This led to the greatest and most significant evolution of organismal diversity and complexity on Earth. Echinoderms, mollusks, worms, arthropods, and chordates arose during this period. It's hard to put a finger on the specific factors that led to this explosion, but many researchers believe that the main reason for it was the increase in the levels of atmospheric oxygen. Some scientists believe that the expansive continental shelf with numerous shallow lagoons or pools provided the necessary living space for larger numbers of different types of animals to coexist. There is also support of theories that argue that ecological relationships between species, such as changes in the food web, competition for food and space, and predatory prey relationships, were primed to promote a sudden, massive coevolution of species. Yet another theory claims genetic and developmental reasons for the Cambrian explosion. There is evidence that both supports and refutes each of the theories described above. The answer may very well be a combination of these and other theories. Let's talk about the six periods that the Paleozoic era was divided into. Cambrian period, 600 to 500 million years ago. All Cambrian period fossils come from rocks formed in aquatic environments. Hard-shelled creatures dominated the sea bottom. Most abundant were the trilobites, arthropods distantly related to the horseshoe crabs, snails, lamp shells, brachiopods, mollusks, graptolites, and marine worms were also common. Traces of primitive jawless armored fish have been found in late Cambrian period rocks, indicating that backboned animals developed during this period. The second is the Ordovician period, 500 to 435 million years ago. Here, the land was still barren, but life was abundant in shallow seas which covered what is now the state of Michigan. Trilobites and brachiopods were common. Squid-like shelled cephalopods probably fed on these creatures. Crinoids, often called sea lilies, were animals that resembled plants. In the Ordovician period, the continental masses on Earth were drifting together to form two supercontinents, Laurasia in the north and Gondwana in the south. The third is a Silurian period, 435 to 410 million years ago. The evolution of colonial corals led to the formation of great coral reefs, similar to those found in the tropical ocean today. These reefs, teeming with life, existed in many parts of North America, including Michigan and Ohio. Large predatory erythropods, called erythropids, and primitive jawed fish may have fed on the many kinds of trilobites. Life began to invade the land at this time, as shown by fossils of primitive terrestrial plants and scorpion-like animals that probably lived near the shoreline. The fourth is the Devonian period, 410 to 360 million years ago. Two great supercontinents met to form a single landmass called Pangaea, all Earth. The Devonian period is called the Age of Fish due to the rapid evolution and radiation of various fish types. Giant armored fish, sharks, and the ancestors of today's bony fish were all present. The lobed fin fish gave rise to the first land vertebrates, the amphibians, in the late Devonian period. With the development of larger land plants, the first forests, made up of scale trees, giant horsetails, and ferns, spread across warm lowlands, providing early land animals with new habitats. The fifth is the Carboniferous period, 
360 to 290 million years ago. The Carboniferous period is named for coal deposits, which form from the accumulation of plant debris in vast swamp forests. Amphibians diversified into several groups, one of which evolved increased agility and the ability to lay shelled eggs on land, thus becoming the first reptiles. Insects, already abundant, developed wings and became the first flying animals. Some geologists split this period into the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian periods based on rock exposures in the eastern United States. Finally, the Permian period, 290 to 240 million years ago. During the Permian period, all the major land masses collided to form a supercontinent called Pangaea. Temperatures were extreme and the climate was dry. Plants and animals evolved adaptions to dryness, such as waxy leaves or leathery skin to prevent water loss. In the mass extinction that ended the Permian, the majority of species went extinct. Many hypotheses have been offered to explain why this mass extinction occurred. These include huge meteorites striking Earth and enormous volcanoes spewing ashes and gases into the atmosphere. Both could have darkened the skies with dust for many months. This, in turn, would have shut down photosynthesis and cooled the planet. Despite the great loss of life, there was light at the end of the tunnel. The Permian extinction paved the way for another burst of new life at the start of the following Mesozoic era. This included the evolution of dinosaurs. Many Cambrian animals seem bizarre at first glance, but are actually members of groups that are still around today, such as the anthropods. Cockroaches. Although they're among the most prolific household pests today, cockroaches actually predate humans by as much as 300 million years. Paleozoic arthropods were the ancestors of modern insects and crustaceans. In the Sulian, colonial corals birthed great coral reefs similar to what is sited in tropical oceans today. These reefs bloomed with life, including predatory arthropods. It wasn't until the Carboniferous that there was a good record of centipedes, millipedes, and other terrestrial insects. The earliest cockroaches were not remarkably different from their present-day companions in size and appearance. They would have looked like medium-sized cockroaches living in the swampy forests of Europe and North America. Trilobites. These armored arthropods scuttled around sea floors around 270 million years before their extinction. They were present during the Cambrian, but lived well into the Ordovician period. They were a group of arthropods similar in size to horseshoe crabs. Their size ranged from a small coin to as big as the wheels of a modern car. Trilobites possessed advanced eyes and walked along the seafloor rather than swimming. They were amongst the most diverse marine invertebrates during much of the Paleozoic, and more than 17,000 species have been described since their extinction. Jawless fish. Jawless fish are the oldest vertebrate fossils ever discovered. They first appeared during the late Cambrian and became more extensive during the middle of the Paleozoic. Their bodies of isolated bony scales and plates until the late Cambrian, they were uncommon species operating as swimming bottom feeders. The Silurian period witnessed their population blossom throughout the seas alongside mollusks and corals. By this period, they had developed armored head shields and body armor. The Devonian period, however, witnessed their slow decline and eventual extinction. Traces of primitive jawless armored fish have been found in late Cambrian rocks. This is a clear manifestation of the development of backboned animals during the Cambrian. Today, the jawless fish of the Paleozoic are survived by their lamprey and hagfish descendants. Jawed fish. Jawfish, known as acanthodians, emerged during the Silurian. They were fast-swimming predators that existed along with the placoderms. The placoderms lived from the Silurian to the Devonian period and were famous for their head and body armor. Sharks were also first seen in the Silurian but survived into the Devonian period. Placoderms and acanthodians would, later on, become extinct as ray bony fish became dominant vertebrate predators. The Devonian period was known as the Age of Fish due to the rapid advancement and evolution of a wide assortment of fish types. Didectes. During the Devonian period, the first set of vertebrates began to colonize the land, known collectively 
as tetrapods. They were diverse in their lizard-like to snake-like appearance. Sizes ranged from 4 inches, 0.33 feet, to 192 inches, 16 feet long. Although they were not the only primitive tetrapods then, the didactes were among the first tetrapods that fed on plant matter. They were also among the first fully terrestrial vertebrates to attain the large size that many of their future ancestors would subsequently surpass. By the time the Permian period ended, reptiles like the didactes had dominated the land fully. Over the course of several millions of years, the planet continued to reshape and evolve with booming biodiversity in the oceans and on land. With extinction came the rise of new and more diverse organisms.